the Warsaw Uprising began on the 1st of August, 1944. Zero Hour, or W Hour, as they called it, was supposed to be at 5 o'clock. But the first outbreak of shooting began earlier in the day at Jollyborsch, the northern suburb of Warsaw. That encounter, which began at 1.30 p.m., was the first skirmish of the Warsaw Uprising. As the saying goes, much has been written. Was it a good idea? Was it launched at the right time? Were there other opportunities? You may well ask. The fact remains that it did take place, and the people who took part in it were brave and beautiful. In the annals of uprisings against tyrannical rule, the Warsaw Uprising is unsurpassed. For 63 days, the Poles waited for the Russians to come across the river from the east and aid them in the rebellion against the Nazis. This did not happen. History has told us why. The Russians were quite happy to watch the Poles be destroyed by the Germans, rather than for the Poles to be free after World War II. There is no doubt about this. This was Stalin's plan. The Warsaw Uprising is indelible on the memory of the 20th century. At the Warsaw Uprising Museum, this history is set in stark terms. We were able to take a close look at those 63 days of fighting for freedom. This is an experience that will not leave you untouched. It will change the way you think about history of this time. And it will remind you of what a great capital Warsaw actually is, the city that stood against one of the greatest tyrannies the world has ever seen and rose again to become a modern leading city in Europe. The next series of episodes will take you through the history of the Warsaw Uprising. Thanks for watching. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Poland Daily Travel. I am here with Alexandra Duda, also known as Ola, which does not mean hello, but is the short name for Alexandra in Polish. And we're in a very important place right now. Mm, exactly. I, I'd like to show you a reconstructed sewer, and sewers are a very important section in the theme of the Warsaw Rising, because insurgents and civilians would use sewers to march to um, different parts of the city to save their lives, to have possibility to fight again, because every single meeting in between Germans and Poles during the Rising was a zero-one meeting. Either side got killed. And passage through sewers was a passage through hell, because there were rats, there were corpses of people who got drowned before, yes, lying, and these are sewers, so they're uh, there was sewage inside, so it was extremely smelly, yes. Lots of people... One can imagine. Yeah. Lots of people who descended into the sewers ne never make it out. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And sometimes they were walking up to their yeah. necks virtually yeah. in, in muck. Yeah. And yeah. there were stories of people walking for hours and hours, yeah. or even crawling in mm -hmm. some cases That's for it. hours and hours. Mm -hmm. uh, the particular story I remember is from uh, when the old town mm. was surrounded by the Germans yes, and completely destroyed, mm. right? In the third, yeah. fourth week, yeah. 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 Uh, and it's completely destroyed, and then there was no way out. Mm. Only through the sewers. Only mm. through the sewers. So that was the huge exodus mm. to the 5, center of town. People, yes. Was it 5,000? Yeah, yeah it they only... managed to get out, but civilians remained. So once Germans came in, they mm. were shocked. Where are the insurgents? Unfortunately, they would kill uh, civilians or deport them to labor camps. And then, from the very beginning of September, they started to um, patrol the uh, manholes, yes. They would drop grenades, they would build barricades, they would pump up gasoline, lit it up. Or gas. Yes, yeah. Yeah. to chase uh, insurgents. From yeah, the Germans Germany. were good with gas, yeah. They used it quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so. But the, other, the thing was they, were, they didn't want to go down there because they were afraid to go down yeah. as well, right? Because yeah. it was really, the underground mm. was literally underground in this case. Yeah? Exactly. Mm. And there's also that, that uh, it's worth 
probably worth mentioning, the film by Andrzej Wajda called Canal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did the famous trilogy yes, yeah. uh, of, of films, and there's one about this yeah, escaping yeah. through the sewers. And this tragic scene when finally they think they are saved, but they just yeah. see the barred exit, yes, and they By just... the river, they can't get out yeah. after they've gone that far. That's Sobulski, yeah. the great Zbigniew yeah. Sobulski, the great yeah. actors yeah. Of, of Polish history, of cinema, yeah. yeah. Okay, stay with us, we're gonna take a walk through Right, so you're, if you're tall like us, or unless you're really, really short, you're gonna be bent over the whole time, right? Yeah. So eventually so you're gonna end up crawling, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Sewers so were very often uh, smaller. They were only 80 centimeters high. So it's very hard to walk through here. Mm. And if you walk for, for hours, for That's six what, hours, yeah. in complete darkness, no, you get crazy. You would go nuts, wouldn't yeah. you? When am I going to get out of here? It's so claustrophobic. So you would get to know the person in front and back very well. Yeah. After all this time. I've been to the museum. I've never done this before. Yeah. It's a new part, in fact. Oh, it was okay. added in 2006, perhaps, seven, eight. Right. Wow. Watch your head. 